<laughs> All that worry. <laughs> God. For Mary O'Donnell, reconstructing Giganotosaurus was the culmination of a life's dream. It's terrific. <laughs> it's like an out-of-body experience, but it's a reality that uh, you're seeing something that no human eyes have seen before and that lived, in this case, a hundred million years ago. I don't know. And it's a rare privilege that those of us who work in this field have. I think this on this side. Back in Chicago, Paul Sereno and his team were busy putting together the bones from Morocco, a puzzle made more difficult to solve because so many pieces were missing. Through patience, uh, the graduate students and myself over a couple of months, uh, slowly, like a porcelain plate dropping on the floor, we, we put that porcelain plate back together, and that, and that was the whole midsection of the skull. Oh, this is really fantastic. Although they'd found only half a skull, an artist could flesh out a replica of the full head of Cacarodontosaurus. And Sereno could make some impressive estimates of its overall size. I think we're talking about a skull that is, is, is clearly uh, five and a half feet long, and we're talking about a body length of between 45 and 50 feet. But the complete cast of the Giganotosaurus head, measured in at just over six feet long, half a foot longer than the largest T Rex. The race to dethrone the king of dinosaurs continued. Korea and his team brought the Giganotosaurus head to New York to be viewed at a conference at the American Museum of Natural History. Even New Yorkers who thought they'd seen everything were surprised at the sight. And at the conference, the group of paleontologists and artists was equally impressed. Wow, marvelous. Blood and guts, the whole business. I'm amazed. It's absolutely monstrous. Big teeth. And we find teeth in Utah that size but not a complete skull. Well, I've always liked big meat eaters. I grew up in this museum in New York. I grew up with this T-Rex in New York, the first T-Rex ever mounted. I'm very fond of it. I just looked at the skull for the first time and I'm overwhelmed to see it in person. It's uh, one of the most amazing skulls I've seen. I saw the T-Rex uh, skull, which I grew up with looking at T-Rexes, but to see this creature, uh, which is much bigger, it's astonishing. Uh, the kid in me really is interested in which one's the biggest. And I think we all want to know what was the biggest meat eater among the dinosaurs. The challenge had been made. Giganotosaurus and Cacarodontosaurus. Two ferocious giant meat eaters. Both large, perhaps larger than T. rex. But could either one of the new monsters truly lay claim to T-Rex's title as king of the meat-eating dinosaurs? And which one would it be? As word spread of the discovery of two giant dinosaurs which might dethrone T-Rex, paleontologists wanted to know how they evolved and how closely they were related. Both Cacarodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus walked the Earth about 100 million years ago. Their bodies were similar in shape, but one lived in Africa, the other in South America. How did two such similar animals evolve so far apart? 145 million years ago, when the landmass was one supercontinent, the largest predator was a 30 to 40 foot long meat eater called Allosaurus. If you want to catch an Allosaurus today, the place to go is central Utah.
The Cleveland Lloyd Quarry, near Price, has produced a phenomenal jumble of allosaur bones in the last two decades, enough to remake 44 dinosaurs. And this makes the, uh, the blood pressure of a dinosaur hunter rise. His heart starts to beat fast. Th this is a paradise for a uh, dinosaur hunter. The paleontologist in charge of the site is Don Burge. And the concentration of the bones right here uh, would go up to, say, 50 bones per square yard. I think maybe it was a, some kind of a lake or spring-fed bog, and it had to have something to, to entice these meat-eaters, a, a bait for the trap, maybe like uh, cheese for a mouse. In this case, a plant-eating dinosaur that was stuck out here in a bog. And so this bipedal carnivore looks out there, ah, here's supper, and he gets stuck in this bog. But what was the relationship, if any, between the Allosaurus and the two new giants of the South? All I can say is they're certainly related. They're cousins. Paleontologist Bob Bacher believes that a more mysterious Jurassic cousin, Megalosaurus, may have been the largest of all the meat eaters. Bacher runs the Tate Museum in Casper, Wyoming. Allosaurus only had one animal to fear that was a rare predator even bigger than they were. That predator was a megalosaur, an animal that's still much of a mystery. We just call it Big Ed. A complete skeleton of Megalosaurus has never been found, but Bacher has a few impressive parts, including the jugo, which he uncovered in the mountains of Wyoming. This is part of the Megalosaur. It doesn't look like much. It's a rib shaft that fit in the rear of the torso around the guts. But what's spe spectacular is the rib keeps on going and going and going and going and going and going. This rib is uh, four and a half feet long, which means the guts, if you added the, uh, the belly, are six feet deep. And if you added the top of the backbone, you have eight and a half feet of torso. That's huge. That's as big as any Giganoto or Carcarodonto or any T-Rex. So this mystery Jurassic dinosaur, Big Ed, is right up there with the largest. Uh, Bigger doesn't necessarily mean tougher. See these holes? Yeah. yeah. Those are wounds. This thing got bit. If they both lived at the same time, who yeah. would win a fight between Most Megalosaurus and T-Rex? Megalosaurs were close quarter fighters. They were designed to attack in densely bushed, densely forested wet terrain. Their flexible bodies would let them go around trees. Their incredible Popeye arms would let them grab a prey close in and slash. T-Rex is totally different. It needs open habitat. It's got speed. It's got height. It's got a powerful bite, but it needs room to maneuver. So in an open terrain, T-Rex would beat the Megalosaur. But in a barroom brawl in a Jurassic forest, the Megalosaur could beat T-Rex. As Bacher sees it, Megalosaurus is one of the first giant meat eaters, from which Allosaurus evolved, followed by, on separate continents, Giganotosaurus and Cacarodonosaurus. The Megalosaurs are their own distinct family, but they're very close to the root the trunk of the family tree of every single giant meat-eater and little meat-eater that came afterwards. They're the patriarchs of these predators. But T-Rex evolved on a separate evolutionary branch. I have no doubt at all that uh, Cacarodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus are in the same family. Tyrannosaurus is not only in a different family, but those families are certainly more remotely related to each other. If we look at uh, Giganotosaurus and Cacarodontosaurus, they're like brother and sister. Uh, compare that to Tyrannosaurus and it's more like a third or fourth cousin. The older Jurassic giants, Allosaurus and Megalosaurus, were lords of a slowly dividing world. Dinosaur evolution comes in two acts. The first act, all the world was one stage. If you were a giant meat eater, a Jurassic meat eater, a Megalosaur, an Allosaur, you could walk and spread your genes from one continent to another. Every place had the same fauna. By the middle of the next dinosaur period, the Cretaceous, 
the Earth was taking on a more modern shape, splitting into two continents, north and south. The continents are pulling apart. You can no longer walk easily from Wyoming to South America or Europe to Africa. And that's where Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus come in. They are Gondwana, they're southern continent specialists. They ruled the seashore, the lake shore, the flood plains, in these southern continents, and in North America, there's very little that's like them. But Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus were very similar animals. Stocky, narrow-jawed, and sharp-toothed. Too similar for either to have evolved in isolation. This similarity suggests that Africa and South America may have been linked by land bridges long into the Cretaceous, longer than anyone had previously thought. 